Hi there everyone. Um, today we're going to go over facial rigging uh, and also um, we're going to go over the reaction manager as part of that and also it's going to include linking as well which is uh, new to you all. Um, you'd have used grouping before and you'd have used attached but you wouldn't have used linking. So this is kind of something that I'm trying to think back. I haven't really used it ever that much, except for when it comes to characters and linking bones together, or occasionally objects. But yeah, not as often. Admittedly, it's mostly when it's been around characters and animation. So first things first. Um, it open the good old Zeke character. So okay, so. Here's my Zeke character. We got to this point last time where he is all rigged up, you know, and uh, you know you can move him and animate him. We went through animation, so the thing we're now focusing on obviously is the face. Now, there are obviously some rules to creating bones in the face. Uh, the key ones are that you really want to look at muscle groups. So this is why I've got ta -da, this thing here. Right. So obviously there's loads of muscles in the face that control all of our uh well it pulls our skin, it pulls it to direct uh emotion towards others. Um you know to indicate emotion. In a character as I've said in previous videos, we're kind of limited, and also, obviously, the more bones we put in, yes, the more realistic we can make it, but also the more complex it can get, the more we can start to lose control. Um, in films, they will have majorly complex rigs, and uh, by all means, when you know you have the time, create a really fantastic rig that has uh, all these bones that can do all these faces and so on and so forth. But in games, we don't have to. Um, you know, in increasingly, as I said before, our bone allowance is, is increasing. We're allowed to put more and more bones in places, um, especially the face, where, you know, because it's a focal point. So, we're going to begin, if I pop that back up, by just basically plotting out um, bits, uh, the bones on the face. But we're not going to be using bones for this. We're going to be using instead... Um, in fact, let's pull that to one side so we can always see that. There we go. That's much, much better. Um, we're actually going to be using something else. We're going to be using helpers. Or, as they're called in Max, dummies. So, dummies are essentially non-objects. They're not really mesh. Um, they're just kind of... Uh, uh, how do I explain it? I guess that's the best way I can explain it. They're not really objects at all. Think of it more as just information, um, you know, that's floating. It's, you know, you can link bits of mesh to it, but essentially it has no physical presence. Uh, so that's kind of what it is. But we can use it to control our face in the same way that bones are used to control, uh, you know, the mesh. Essentially, they're invisible bones. There we go. Found the words for it. So... Click on the dummy, and we're going to begin mapping out the face. Now, I have put on Blackboard uh, an ideal layout for the face. Okay, so, you know, don't worry too much about that. Uh, let's make this see-through. Okay, and what I also recommend as well at this point is maybe go in and just hide the cat bones, the cat rig, because they're just in the way. Yeah. Okay, so... First one we're going to do, and if we just select like that, you'll see that it creates a little dummy, which is just a little box like this. And I'm going to pull this forward. So in this part, we're going to be creating a part of the lip, or one part of the lip that's going to tug on it. And there's going to be around eight bones in the lip altogether. So create another one there. Okay. I might just pull that. I want it to arch. Okay. Okay. 
Yep. And the same on the bottom. So we can for this part. Oh, let's freeze that. That could get a little bit annoying. Freeze selection. Yay! Right. Drag it down. And you can duplicate them, which saves time. And then just reshape this one so that it's like so. So, so far we've got six. The other two, as you may have guessed, are going to go on either side here. So, you can take one of them, bring it over, and we're going to put this right about here. Okay. And... Right. And what this makes up is this muscle right here, um, which I always pronounce it incorrectly. I've been told this in the past before. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's called the Bucinator, but <laughs> I have been told off for that. So uh, don't quote me on the names here. Uh, so that makes up these bones. The next ones we're going to bring in are the ones up here. This is a pole. Um, let's see what we're going to do. These are going to be our lavatures. So, we're going to pop that one there. And, uh, in fact, let's even it out by bringing it into the, roughly into the middle about there. And then we're going to bring one that's really close into the nose there. Yeah, okay. Copy them over. And uh, there. To try and get as near as possible. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit off. Like a sofa, and you'll notice that they are completely flat. So that's something that you have to go in afterwards and fix. Like so. Pull that, pull that. Okay, and with these ones, pull them forward, and the same for these ones here. Pull them forward too, but not too far that they come through the skin. We don't want them to come through. Right, okay, so there's the first few. Right, the next one we're going to bring in is the jaw, so we can take this one here. Bring that down to the chin there, and bring it in like so. Okay, that will be our jaw, jaw one. Back to the front again, and this time we're going to bring in one for down by our cheek. But we're going to pull it back so it's about there and we're going to copy that across do the same on the other side okay right and if we copy these again these two and bring it up we're going to put that means that's not clear at that point but we're going to put one on either side up here, in fact, a little bit too high, just bring it down a notch so it's it kind of in line with the ear. And what this will do is it'll create this part here, which will be our cheekbone. Okay. That looks about correct to me. Okay. So that is. Most of them so far. The last few before we get to the eyes is the eyebrows. Now on Zeke here, you can't really see his eyebrows. They're there, but you can't really see them. Um, but I'll show you where they'd be anyway, and we'll do it anyway. So eyebrow up there is just one. Okay, so we can copy that across, do the same on the other side. But then we also have a central one, which is the frontal bone. 
Okay, so when you're frowning, this is the part you pull down to create a frown. Alright, so they would be just a little bit higher than that. That one would be just a little bit lower. And there we go. So the last bit, the absolute last bit, is the eyes. And to be honest, this is the more difficult part. You create one of course, scale it up a little bit and make it a little bit bigger for this right and what's important now is the pivot point because notice that the pivot point is absolutely in the centre of this box and that is the point of rotation see? now think about when the eye is rotating okay, obviously normally you know it's uh, all the muscles pull it in all directions, don't they? so this rotation point is right at the centre of it. It's, it's, kind of, it's not really a sphere, if you know your anatomy, but it's near enough a sphere. So we want that pivot point to be at where the centre of the eye is. But of course, we've only got half an eye. So, because we don't need the back of the eye in the model. So we've got to make it almost halfway, or as near enough as we can, to halfway back, like so. And then if you want to scale up a bit more, feel free to, like so. You've also got to make sure that it's absolutely in the centre of the eye as well. Otherwise it won't rotate correctly. Right. Before we go over to the other side, um, I'm going to do the eyelids also. So for this, I want you to copy it again. I'm going to scale copy it this time. There we go, copy. And what's different about this is that where the, and this is where it gets a tiny bit more difficult. Where the eyelids, uh, where sorry, the eye rotates from the centre point, the eyelid won't. The eyelid will rotate from the back here, because we want it essentially to rotate up and down like so. So we need to, it to do it from the back. Okay. So with the eyelid, we're going to have to move the pivot back to the back, and then scale it down. Because really, um, unlike the eye, obviously. Uh, you know, we've currently got its pivot in the centre because it's going to rotate around the centre, but we actually want it to rotate around the end on this. Um, so, yeah, you probably could leave it as it is, but we're going to pull it back and make it look more suitable for being an eyelid bone. Um, to do this, all we've got to do is move the pivot, which you already know how to do. Okay, so effect pivot only, and then just pull it back until it's just at the end like so. So not really complicated that much. And then all we've got to do is pull it halfway in. Okay. So if you want to make this a precise operation, you can take the coordinates of the eye. And um, for this demonstration, I won't. In fact, I think that's... <laughs> Unfortunately, I've actually managed to get that pretty much right. So that's great. Okay, so a little bit more scaling. And then rotate it by... I don't know, about 45 degrees should do it. If necessary, I think looking at it, a little more scaling will do the trick. So it looks currently like so. There we go. And all I'm going to do is copy that and bring that down 90 degrees, and that's our lower lid. So, so far, should have something like that. Okay. Right. So let's take that. Alright. And just pull it across, copy it over to the other side. Line it up as best as possible again. Okay. And there we have it. That is a basic facial rig. And I think, I think that should be all good. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can add more bones in. You can add more bones for over here for making the either do, uh, you know, twitch and things like that if you wanted to. But on a basic level, this is, this is kind of it. All right. Anyway, so in the next video, um, I'll take you through the reaction 
the reaction manager. Um, but as a side note, obviously go in and name all these bones uh, appropriately. So for instance, you know, this is going to be uh, what's that? That's left underscore eye, like so. And the same with the eyelids as well. Yeah, left underscore eye lid. I'm not going to do all that now. Um, but what I have done is I've given you a, a giant sheet on Blackboard that will just just as I did with the other one with the body. Um, which will give you suggested names. I say suggested names because there's no formal name to this. Um, obviously, you can see there's loads of muscles. Um, some things, obviously, I've put in like the lavator and uh, the bucinator. Um, I think I've also put in the rosaurus as well as being this bone over here. So some bones I've labelled correctly and some I haven't because it just doesn't seem worth putting them in cor naming them correctly, to be perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, I mean it's supposed to be easy for you as well. Remember that. If there's a, if some way of labelling the bones that's easy for you to recognise, then please use your way. Don't use mine. Um, anywho, uh, that's it. Okay, moving on to the next video.